It's not over. Stop the fight! No! People! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ, I'm the king, kill everyone! Ah! All right, guys, welcome back to Broke Bets. Um, getting you guys these picks early before UFC 286 and actually before Piotr Jan versus Devalishvili. Um, so we won't recap any bets or any fights on that. But what's up, my man? Oh, what's going on, my dude? Uh, excited for number 286. Um, Edwards and Usman 3 should be a good one. Yeah, we got 15 fights to run through, so let's just jump into it here. We got first fight, Veronica... Um, Macedo versus Juliana Miller. I don't know if I said that last name right, but Macedo it's, is how I would pronounce. It. Okay, yeah, it's Dan Hardy's wife versus Juliana Miller, pretty much. Um, you know, Dan Hardy's wife here. I might just call her that the whole th- time. Um, she has actually a decent skill set, but she's six and four. She doesn't have a great record. Um, she has actually pretty uh, good jujitsu, from what I've seen. You know, she had an armbar versus Pollyanna Viana. Um, pretty impressive win um considering viana i think is a black belt um but she's on a huge layoff here this is like a three-year break and i don't know if that's pregnancy stuff with dan hardy and all that but um i'm gonna take miller miller i underestimated her in her first fight listen her striking's trash but her ground game is pretty legit she just Gets a body lock on girls and she takes them to the ground. I mean, what, what do you think here? Yeah, I think Miller can uh, just out muscle um, Macedo. I think uh, Miller at 26, I mean, she's still really young. I mean, both of them are still pretty young. Uh, yeah. But Miller should just be able to uh, out muscle her. And I think uh, that three year layoff is just uh, too long of a time to, to not be active. Yeah, Veronica, I think that she's actually got way better stand-up. But in, if you watch that Brogan Walker fight, man, Brogan Walker's winning so many exchanges. And she just kept on walking into the clinch and trying to fight with this girl and then get taken down from the clinch. It was so frustrating to watch at the time. Um, she doesn't, and then uh, for Veronica, she doesn't have the best wrestling. So I would assume getting her to the ground would be a problem. Like I said, she's got decent BJJ. I'm going to take her to, to survive to a decision. Although Juliana Miller did get pretty busy with her ground and pound. Um, and and uh, to draw a comparison, I just feel like Juliana Miller fights very similar to Jasmine J- Jazdavicius. Just gets into the clinch, you know, gets the body locked, and then trips you. That's kind of their goal. So, um, yeah, I don't think she's a minus 435 favorite, but uh, um, she definitely should be a favorite still. So, Juliana, Juliana Miller by decision. Okay, for the second fight, we have Jai Herbert versus Ludovic Klein. Um, I'm taking Ludovic Klein in this fight. I I just think that uh, his kicking game and his most recent performances have been really impressive, whereas Jai Herbert's been a little bit underwhelming in uh, you know the uh, Kyle Nelson fight. Ilya Taboria fight obviously had his moments, but um, you know there's also some things that happened in that fight. I think that. Uh, really favored Jai Herbert. If you look at Ilya Taporia's stance, the dude squats so low, and that's where he gets his power from, that he really stands at like a five foot two height. And Jai Herbert's knees, you know, they come up an inch and they're fucking at five two. So um I think Ludovic though can control this fight with his kicks because he's just got a nasty um left body kick, left high kick. And his left hand has been just money. I mean, that straight left hand down the pipe absolutely messed up Mason Jones with it. Um, beat up Devontae Smith in some moments with it. I think that was a bad split decision at the time. But I'm going to take him by decision. I think that this fight will happen pretty slow. What do you think? Yeah, I think it will be a slow matchup here. I think uh, you saw in Jai Herbert's last fight with Kyle Nelson, that was a pretty underwhelming fight. Um uh, I think uh, everyone, or most people, had it uh, not going the distance, and they pretty much just clinched the entire fight and right. pretty much didn't do anything. Uh, Ludovic Klein of late um, had a pretty good performance against Mason Jones when Klein was like a plus 300 underdog in that fight. Uh, shocked a lot of people in that one, and I think uh, he can keep that momentum going here. Uh, the reach 
Um, disadvantage for Klein does scare me a little bit, uh, 77 inches to 72. But uh, like you said, I think uh, the kids kicks will play a difference in this fight. Well, I think that, yeah, I think that Klein, yeah, like you said, in kicking range, I think he controls range really well. He, he keeps right in this range where it's hard for people to deal with him. But obviously he's been facing smaller opponents. Um, I also think that this uh, move up to lightweight has been extremely beneficial for him. Um, I mean, just look at the damage he did to Mason Jones. I think that that really tells the story. And it, whereas like Nate Landwehr, he was kind of struggling in moments, and sometimes he can get caught up in caught up in long clinches. But uh, Jai Herbert just looked very hesitant and scared to be knocked out. So um, you know, there's a chance Klein could get a, a KO here, but I do think this would be a slow fight. So. Yeah, Klein by decision. For the next fight, we have Jennifer Maya versus Casey O'Neill. I am taking Jennifer Maya. Um, you know, the record doesn't look great for Jennifer Maya, but what you don't see a lot of, or what you don't think about when you think about her is her level of competition. He is, She has faced the top of the division for a long time. She's like, last 10 fights is like a top, top 10 contender every single time. So, um... Casey O'Neill, though, I think that this favorite thing for her is that there's like a more polarizing thing with her hype. And let me tell you, I don't, I don't really believe in it too much. Um, I might upset a lot of people by saying that because I think a lot of guys have boners for this girl. Um, I think the guru does. But anyway, she, <laughs> the the O'Neill, she's got slow hands, man. If you watch her boxing in the Rock Sand fight, man, her hands are slow. She doesn't have any damage on those hands. Um. She's got solid range control, but um, against a better boxer, I just don't I don't see her doing as well. And um, she likes body lock takedowns and stuff, but she's not the strongest girl. She's pretty thin. Jennifer Maya is pretty strong. She's dealt with a lot of these grapplers. Um, I, I just think Jennifer Maya wins this one. I'm gonna take her by decision. Jennifer Maya though, she just beat up Marina Moroz, who's a really good boxer. Um. And, and she's got good boxing herself. She's got the good ground game if she does get taken down. She's got high volume and striking. Um, and she's got solid takedowns herself. And I think that she's got better head movement. I'm all over this fight. And uh, what, what do you think here? Yeah, I think uh, Jennifer Maya, her experience fighting top of the, di- top of the division, I mean, all, all of her losses against her, like Furat, Chukagin, Chivchenko, I mean, if you look at their common t- opponent, Casey O'Neill's last fight with with Roxanne went to a split decision. Jennifer Maya beat her twice, um, and that was when Roxanne was, and that was in 2019. And Roxanne's retired now after that last fight with Casey O'Neill. Um, I just think uh, Maya can tough this fight out and win a decision. Yeah, I mean, I really don't like betting these fights, but they're really convincing me that I should do it because. They'll just keep on making Jennifer Maya dog um, in these close fights, and she'll overperform even against good opponents. So, um, yeah, taking Jennifer Maya by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Jake Hadley versus Malcolm Gordon. Taking Jake Hadley. Um, Malcolm Gordon, not a very consistent fighter. Um, also is a bit of a Derek Brunson for the flyweight division, kind of like runs across the cage, tries to take people down, and um, what I've noticed from the, this guy is he gets stuck in clinch positions a lot in uh, in grappling matches, but I think with a person like Jake Hadley, who showed really good fight IQ in his last fight, I think that uh, Jake Hadley finds a knockout here when uh, Gordon overcommits himself. I'm going to say a second round knockout. Um, what do you think? Yeah, Jake Hadley in his last performance looked really good against uh, Candelario. That was Candelario's first time being finished. Uh, he previously fought Tatsuru Tyra. And Tyra couldn't get him out of there. So, I mean, just looking at that, I think uh, Hadley's pretty dangerous. He's only 26 years old, and uh, I think he can make a statement uh, victory in this performance uh, being in front of his home crowd here in England. Yeah, like... If you if you watch Jake Hadley's last fight, his boxing was on point, and if you look at Malcolm Gordon's boxing, it's it's not good at all. Um, criticism I have, I know Muhammad Makayev's later in this card, but um, 
he just was too willing to just grapple only with Gordon, and Gordon does have good BJJ. Um, he's willing to survive on the ground, but he's really not extremely dangerous. And I think if Hadley really wants to win this fight, he's just got to keep it in the stand-up, make Malcolm Gordon shoot those takedowns, tire himself out, um, and then work the body as well, which he's good at, um, and then using that low calf kick. And, and he's he's really good at controlling range. Um, and Malcolm Gordon, like I said, not a very uh, amazing career thus far. The Sumadurji knockout was pretty fast and easy for him. And, uh, yeah, I'm taking Jake Hadley here by knockout in the second round. Okay, for the next fight, we have Christian Leroy Duncan versus Dusko Todorovic. I am taking, we are taking, Christian Leroy Duncan. Um, You know, this guy, is questionable part of his game is his ground game. He can get stuck up against the fence and uh, taken down and held down for, for some time, but he does try to work his way to the feet. He doesn't just fully accept the position. And Dusko Todorovic does have takedowns. And here's how my prediction of the fight plays out. I think Dusko, uh, similar to how he tried to fight in Jokalani, he tries to go for takedowns the entire first round, gets a little tired, and uh, Christian Leroy Duncan gets up and uh, knocks him out in the second round. That's my opinion on this fight. What do you think? Yeah, I think Leroy showed uh, Leroy Duncan showed some pretty good cardio in his Gage Warriors uh, performances, um, especially that uh, Milan fight, um, which went to the third round. I think uh, he got taken down in that one, held down a little bit. And then, uh, and then pretty much put it on him in the in the round, uh, second and third round. Right. I think uh, he's got some pretty unor- unorthodox uh, attacks. Like he'll he'll do some flying knees and <laughs> do some of that spinning stuff. But uh, that could get him caught in some bad positions and get him taken down. But in the end, I do like him to find a knockout. Yeah, I mean, um, you look at Dusko Todorovic, and this dude just. You know, he almost lost to Jordan Wright in, like, the first round until Jordan Wright got tired in the second and then found a finish. Um, not a very consistent career. And this, he leaves his chin up to be hit, um, and he, he doesn't ever use his hands to block punches. He tries to Israel Adesanya out of range. And um, better fighters can just catch you when you're doing that. And like I said, with the grappling going on, Leroy Duncan really doesn't slow down when people are grappling him. His opponents seem to slow down. And, uh, yeah, second, third round comes around just like you said. The pace gets up, and uh, Dustro probably goes down. So, uh, Christian Leroy Duncan, KO, round two. For the next fight, we have Muhammad Mikhaya versus Jafel Fialo. Uh, Philho? Uh, we're taking Muhammad Mikhaev. Uh, obviously this dude is just a grappling machine and I have some criticism, criticism on him. I think that, you know, other prospects, especially in the flyweight division, you just can't be only a grappler. And I know he has high level striking still, but he's got to use it. He's got to test his stand up a little bit more because you're going to get in these higher level of matchups. You can't grapple Brandon Moreno the whole fight and, and stuff like that. It's just not going to happen when you get higher up. Um, he loves... Uh, you know, just having top pressure in wrestling, and he doesn't go for submissions a ton in that Malcolm Gordon fight. And uh, But he just loves to go for takedowns with not a lot of damage. And he needs more confidence in his stand-up. In that Malcolm Gordon fight, he hurt him on the feet once or twice and then just kind of rushed for takedowns. I think he could have finished Gordon in round one with punches, but um, he's still getting the job done here. Philho, um, not great takedowns. Uh, He has pretty meat and potatoes striking, nothing special going on, stands in front of his opponent. And he was was losing on Dana White's contender series until he uh, came back and got a knockout in the third round. His grappling, his opponent was getting away from him, but uh, he came back and had a knockout at the end of the fight. And he likes to end combos with a kick, which makes his striking more effective. But overall, this is a Muhammad Bakaya fight and probably will just take place on the ground. What do you think? Yeah, this is uh, another stepping stone for Muhammad Makayev to, to climb up the ranks. He's minus 800. I think uh, that pretty much tells you what uh, uh, odds makers are thinking here. I think he's just going to run through them. Um, either probably find a submission late or 
or like you said, go to decision. But yeah, just grapple heavy approach. I think uh, he's going to win this fight. Yeah, I, I just think he needs a little bit more confidence in his stand up. Understand that you're not going to get caught with every single punch and put on a little, maybe a little more of a show for the people, but we'll see. I guess you don't want to lose either. So, Muhammad Kayev by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Sam Patterson versus Yanal Ashmov. Taking Sam Patterson, I am not impressed with either of these guys. I don't think they're... I don't know if they're full UFC quality yet. Sam Patterson, contender series fight, showed decent grappling, but a lot of that is just because he's fucking massive. 6'3", 78-inch reach. You know, when you're that big, it's hard for someone to try to wrestle you, and you're going to have some sweeps and opportunities there, but he's got really slow striking, and uh, he's easy to hit. He's got a long-ass neck, clearly, from this picture you can see, Um, and he leaves his chin out there to be hit, and the dude he was fighting the Contender Series was teeing off on him multiple times, and um, he doesn't use his reach advantage to his, like, as much as he should, and every time he kicks, man, he leaves that chin up in the air ready to be hit, and uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him yet, but he's going to be better than Yanal Ashmov here, who has a huge disadvantage height and reach-wise, and uh, doesn't seem to have much great striking, just kind of basic, throws like as hard as he can, but doesn't hit the target that often. He can get controlled with grappling, um, he likes to kick, whether that's uh, front kick, leg kick, spinning kicks, he likes all that. And I just I just picked up he's not that good. I think that Sam Patterson finds a submission in the first round here. But, uh, you know, I don't place a ton of confidence in him, but in the ground game, he should be better. So, Yeah, like you said, uh, um, he wasn't that impressive in his uh, contender series fight, and he had, he acknowledged that uh, in his interview afterwards. He, he, didn't, he said it was a, a poor performance. Um, he said he was nervous in that fight, so I don't know. Uh, I, I think uh, in this one, I think he'd be more nervous with the huge crowd. But I still think he'll get the job done. His striking, you know, like you said, wasn't too impressive. He was, like, trying to kick when he was in, like, striking range. Right. Leaving his chin up. Um, his ground game is pretty darn good, though, so that's where I see him uh, winning this fight. I do think that Sam Patterson's opponent in the Contender Series is better than even Yanal. So, um, Yanal, like, like I, I've seen his PFL fights and uh, the PFL fight he was in, and you know he he gets controlled and gra- or he can gets controlled and grappling, and then his opponent makes a mistake, and then he slips on the top position and wins a round. So I'm not going to trust that here. Yeah, Sam Patterson submission round one. Okay, in the first or the next, sorry the next fight we have Jack Shore versus Macwan Americani. Taking Jack Shore, um, you know Americani has kind of like shown who he is as a fighter. He's a uh, submission or bust, and that's just his style. He's kill or be killed, and he's a first round fighter. You know he does have really great submissions, but he's coming in against a guy who's pretty hard to control and take down. And I think that's pretty evident. You watch the Richie Simone fight. Ricky Simone couldn't even get close to taking him down at moments until he rocked him. Um, and uh, Jack Shore's shown improved stand-up in every single fight. And Macwan Americani, he's going to gas out in this first round, probably trying to get an anaconda choke, and then he'll uh, he'll get killed. And I got him get, getting knocked out in the second round by Jack Shore. Yep, uh, like Jack Shore in this fight, he is moving up to featherweight. Um in this one, sure that is. Um, he hasn't fought in featherweight since, I think, 2017, I think I saw in his earlier Cage Warrior days. Um, but, yeah, like you said, I think Amir Khan, he's dangerous in the first round with submissions, but after that, he's gassed. Um, you saw it in the Lerone Murphy fight. Uh, he, he looked pretty good in the first round, took Lerone Murphy down and held him there. And then round two, Murphy knocked him out with a knee i think uh jack shore can find the rock um knockout in round two here. right i don't i just don't see a part of the fight where americani's substantially better than jack shore and in the stand-up i mean the only question would be how's jack shore's chin after taking that big punch 
Um, you know, he didn't get knocked out cold, but he was really rocked until he got submitted. Um, but yeah, I think that Shore puts a pace on him on the feet. Second round knockout. Okay, for the next fight, we have Chris Duncan versus Omar Morales. This is a tough matchup, um, based stylistically, but I'm going with Omar Morales. Um, Chris Duncan, he's a little bit just too hittable, walks into heavy punches too much for me. And not that Omar Morales is super high volume, but he is always on the back foot, more of a counter puncher than going after somebody. And uh, Chris Duncan, you know, the Contender Series fight, uh, I mean, obviously the Borshev one, uh, took him down for a little bit until the second round where he just got flatlined. The Charlie Campbell fight got rocked a lot until he got the comeback knockout. But overall, I just don't trust this dude quite yet. Um, he's entertaining so far, but I'm not going to pick him. I'm going to go Omar Morales, knockout round one. Um, I mean, what do you I think? think uh, yeah, like you said, uh, Duncan's um, contender series fights were both super entertaining. He was getting rocked and knocked down a couple times against Campbell and then came from behind and found his knockout, which was pretty incredible. One I of think, the knockouts uh, of the year, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Morales having uh, about a year layoff here against uh, since his last fight against Medic, with him getting knocked out. I think uh, him having UFC experience fighting these tougher guys like um, Chikadze, Medic, Jonathan Pierce, um, those are the, those are who he's losing to. I think they're top level guys, and I just don't see see that in Duncan. Yeah, M- Morales is really hesitant. Um, which like scares me. I would never bet on him, but um, and he doesn't fight well in the back foot, which Chris B- Duncan probably will put him on. But um, Chris Duncan he uses the calf kick well. Other than other than that, the the power and the brawlingness, I don't think it benefits him. And I think that's gonna come in here and possibly just get him finished right away. Um, but yeah, obviously the the tapology community and MMA community is probably leaning towards Chris Duncan because of that viral knockout, but I saw a lot of mistakes in the Contender Series fight, so Morales, KO, round one. Next fight, we have Lerone Murphy versus Gabriel Santos. Picking Lerone Murphy. Um, Every time I watch this guy fight, he reminds me of Leon Edwards. He has a very similar style. They look very similar. They have a similar frame, but obviously different weight classes. Um, I'm going to take him by decision in this fight. He just controls range so well, and what I've really seen from him fight by fight is that he he's really improved his ground game defense, stop and takedowns, um, being able to get up from the ground. Uh, clearly that Mir- Mirakani fight, um, and you know where he got a tie versus Zuba, he, he got a lot better since then. Um, but yeah, he he's got great kicks at range, body, head, leg. Um, and he's got a really good step in right hand, and I think that he controls the range here, starts around the octagon, and Gabriel Santos moves forward but struggles to land. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, Ron Murphy. You know, he's decently powerful with his punches. He was originally scheduled to to fight Nathaniel Wood, and that would have been a banger. But, yeah. Uh, Santa was coming in on a week's notice. I mean, I think uh, Laurel Murphy should get this one done. Um, just the proper preparation he he had for this fight coming in, um, and a lesser opponent than what uh, Nathaniel Wood would have been, uh, I think uh, he should get this victory here. Yeah, from what I've noticed of Gabriel Santos, you know he does the basics well. He can strike, he use kicks in his striking, um, and has a decent round game. But he's a little stiff still, and he leaves his head on the center line. Um, he almost got knocked out in his first LFA fight. He got he left his chin up in the air after a spinning back fist and got caught. And I don't know if that's just because he didn't see the punch coming, but he got almost flatlined. He got knocked down, um, but came back and won the fight. And, uh, you know, he, he controls range really well. And what I do like about Gabriel Santos' striking is he tries to uh, finish the with the last punch in an exchange. You know, if it's initiated by Murphy, he typically ends with a punch or a kick on the end of it. But overall, Murphy's... Murphy showed a really good game. They're both undefeated fighters, and I just think the the level of competition that Murphy's been through so far um, makes him 
uh, more capable of winning this fight. So, Lerone Murphy by decision. For the next fight, we have Marvin Vittori versus Roman Delizze. And I'll tell you what, we'll be really honest here. I can't get a Roman Delizze fight to say, like, right to save my life. Every time he's an underdog, I picked against him. He wins. Um, and you know what? I'll support uh, my bad picks. I mean, we're going to pick Marvin Vittori, and I- I'm hoping that Roman Delizze does something crazy, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, Delizze got great BJJ, but he can be totally outstruck on the feet, and that was what was happening in the Hermanson fight. He was he's down 1-0 in the second round, got that crazy sweep, which uh, put him right into the position to finish the fight. And uh, Yeah, and he was losing the second round up until that point. Right, and uh, Jack Hermanson isn't as good on, on the feet even as uh, Marvin Vittori. Maybe Jack can point fight a little bit more, but Marvin's... Uh, got a great fucking chin as we all know and he's got a really good left hand this dude is great at stepping into range with a piston of a left hand used it against paula costa like a champ and uh you know he sticks to the basics he does everything well he can grapple he can strike and uh doesn't try to get cute with anything and i think delizze he's kind of just got to swing for the fences and hope he can knock marvin out or get him to the ground and uh, get a submission. That's going to be really hard to do. And, you know, I'll cheer for it. I'll hope he does it. But I think Marvin Vittori takes this one to a decision and wins. Yeah, I think uh, if Delizzi is going to win, I think it would uh, be by finish. Most likely a submission, though. Right. Um, but Vittori, I mean, he's only... I mean, just looking at his losses, he's only lost to the top guys. Adesanya twice and Robert Whitaker. And those guys are... Um, a way different stylistic matchup than what Delizzi is. I think uh, Vittori can win the fight on the feet and avoid being taken down and cruise to a decision. And and I have a hard time of seeing Delizze. Like, he's Delizze is more of a first-round fighter, too. He's got the best ability in the first round. And Vittori's going to have that better gas tank. He's fought five rounds multiple times. So I don't see a problem for his gas tank as this fight goes on. And, yeah. I'm thinking Marvin Vittori by decision. For the next fight, we have Gunnar Nelson versus Brian Barberena. Uh, picking Gunnar Nelson, you know, he's going to probably just get the takedowns because Bar- Brian Barberena just, you know, he doesn't fight that style. He just fights the high-volume striking style. Here's some stats for you. I wrote these down. Uh, Brian Barberena's takedown defense, you know, you already know it's bad, but this dude got taken down eight times versus Jason Witt. Four times versus Darian Weeks, five times against Matt Brown, and four times versus RDA. So, Gunnar Nelson, he doesn't even have the slickest takedowns, but this dude just controlled Takashi Sato on the ground, no problem, once he takes the back, gets the fight stuck there the whole time, and he's probably going to work in a submission in the first round. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I like uh, Gunnar Nelson to win, obviously. Um, Barbarina just doesn't have the the takedown defense to, to win this fight. I think uh, Gunnar Nelson can get this fight to the mat, either find a dis- uh, submission or win a decision. Um, of Gunnar Nelson's losses, I mean, they're to top guys like Gilbert Burns, Leon Edwards, Bonzanibio, I guess, um, Damian Maya back in 2015. But, uh, yeah, um, Nelson was originally scheduled to fight... Uh, Daniel Rodriguez and Brian Barberina stepping in on short notice. Yeah, and Barberina's really not a one-shot knockout power guy. And Gunnar Nelson holds a karate stand-up style where he just is out of range. And then he'll dart in. From what I've seen of, you know, how he gets people to the ground and how he gets his strikes, he does the Wonder Boy dart in, but it's either a right hand to the face or it's straight to a takedown. So it's like you've just got to guess which one it is. And Brian Barberena, it's going to be hard to be the volume fighter when you got a guy who got that wide stance and can stay away from you. So, yeah, Gunnar Nelson, submission, round one. For the next fight, don't know why this one's on the main card. Actually, I do. Uh, anyway, Joanne Wood versus Luana Carolina. They need representation in the main card. I get it, whatever. But um, Joanne Wood, not a very good fighter, going to pick her. Um, this is this is a bad fight. I mean, Luana Carolina has some credible wins. 
but she doesn't actually do much in most of her wins. She she kind of just states to a decision by kicking kicking the legs, and she just looked god awful against Molly McCann. God fucking awful. She throws a kick with her chin up in the air, and Molly would just punch her every single time. Obviously, until that crazy knockout. But Johan Wood uh, has almost nothing to offer. It feels like on the feet either. She doesn't have much damage. She does leg kicks, but they don't do any damage. I mean, Luana does the same thing. And uh, she's very hittable on the feet. I think that Luana has the ground game advantage, but I don't know if it plays out there in this fight. I'm taking Joanne Wood. What do you think? Yeah, um, I'm thinking this is the featured fight, and we're all looking forward to it. Um, I, yeah, I can't get get a solid pick on this one. I mean... I think uh, Carolina um, might be able to get it to the ground. I mean, Joanne Woods, her her last losses, two losses are, are by first round submission. Yeah. Um, so if Carolina can get it to the ground, uh, I would like that. But I mean, like you said, I can't really get a read on it. Yeah, I mean, Luana Carolina, uh, from what I've seen, like Wood, if she wants to take this fight to the ground, I think she's gonna have a hard time. By the way, I think the height numbers are wrong for this fight. I think Luana Carolina is like six eight, or, or sorry, not six, five eight or taller, and uh, she'll she she has actually pretty decent takedown defense. I don't really see Joanne Wood taking her down, but if you're if you're betting on this fight, you're a crazy man. That's all I have to say. Unless you're doing the over two and a half, then I I totally get it, but. Um, yeah, Joanne Wood by decision. For the co-main event, we have Justin Gagey versus Rafael Faziv. Picking Rafael Faziv, I'll tell you what, I think the odds are a little bit twisted, they're a little bit too far, but, um, this dude is just extremely technical on the feet, and Gagey hasn't been that. And, you know what, Gagey's got a lot of miles on him, this dude is, uh, taken so much damage in his last couple fights, or last, I shouldn't even say couple, all of his fights, and uh, I think that Fazeev outpoints him here. What do you think? Yeah, I like uh, Fazeev to, to win a decision, I think. Um, I think he's super patient on the feet. Uh, I think Gaethje will be pretty wild. I mean, I think the crowd will probably get him going, and he'll just be swinging like crazy, and Fazeev will be technical, um, counter punching him with a right and left hook. I think uh, that's where where Fazeev will find some of his, his success. I also like his body kick. I think that can that will be able to land there too. Um, I think uh, a decision is pretty likely for him. Yeah, I mean, I I have a lot of questions with this fight because this is a unknown matchup in a lot of ways. I think for Fazeev. He hasn't really fought a brawler, and Jason, Justin Gagey is that style. He's a dog fighter. He'll get you know get in the clinch and do dirty boxing. He does a lot of that, and you know the calf kick. That's always the big question with how people will deal with that. Well, in my opinion, Faziv has a lot of really good footwork, and he doesn't really show his uh, front foot too often without throwing a strike or a kick from it. So I don't know if Gagey's been able to time that leg kick very well to uh really punish his legs and he's a you're talking about a muay thai really good muay thai fighter in fazeev yeah he's a muay thai champion yeah so that's that's uh any fights at uh or he trains at uh tiger muay thai so like this dude's you know dealing with leg kicks all the time i would expect he can deal with those um also with fazeev he just rolls punches so well you watch the bobby green fight even when he's exhausted He's bopping his head back and forth, and he's got a really great roll on on uh, punches coming his way. He doesn't really get caught clean. He's got those crazy fast kicks, and who knows how Justin deals with those. But uh, the big question with him, you know, he's slowed down in some fights before. And, you know, it's not a five-round fight, but in Justin Gagey fights, people pretty typically slow down because there's a lot of warfare going on. Um, overall, though, Fazeev controls range. Um, and I think Gagey just isn't as technical and he overcommits on punches, you know, and I don't know how that's going to pay off for him. What do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, Gagey will be swinging for the fences and Fazeev will, will stay patient and waiting for the counter strikes, which 
I do really like him in this matchup uh, for that reason. I do like uh, Fazeev going five rounds in his last fight or start of the fifth round. He had uh, good gas in that fight too. Which yeah, he, he did. He did show good gas in that fight, which um, that was a big question mark for him, uh, especially with Dos Anjos, who was trying to take him down pretty much the entire fight, uh, and his gas tank held up. So I'd expect uh, it to hold up here. Another thing I wanted to highlight is I don't think Justin Gagey's fought a very technical fighter for a while now. You know, Charles Oliveira has all of the abilities, but he's on the feet, more of a brawling, like, Muay Thai craziness style. Michael Chandler, not very technical at all, just a powerhouse. Habib, you know, just a wrestler, not not, not replicating Fazeev style. Tony Ferguson's wild. Um... And Donald Cerrone before that, and then before that's what Edson Barbosa, James Vick. Like I, I don't, I don't think he's fought somebody similar to this style for a while. And it's gonna be hard for him to replicate that. So um, there's a chance that Fazib gets that knockout. Like we said, uh, gagey has got a lot of miles on him, but yeah, we do like the decision here. You gonna bet on Fazib? Uh, I do plan on it. Um, hopefully, some of these Gagey fanboys can. I pull pull that, the line uh, down. Plus yeah. 200 or whatever he's at right now. Yeah. Pull that line down. But um, I think last week I saw it at minus 240. It's now 230 as we're doing this video. So um, hopefully it comes down. But I think a lot of people would probably be betting on Fazeev if it went down to like minus 200. Right. All right. Rafael Fazeev by decision. All right, guys. Welcome to the main event. For the welterweight championship, we have Leon Edwards and Kamara Usman. Before we give our pick, guys, drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. I know we'd like those Kamara fanboys trying to talk shit in the comments. Come at us. We don't really care um, because we're picking Leon Edwards. That's what's happening here. We're we're saying and still and uh, pound for pound, headshot dead. That's it. Uh, yeah, Leon. I think he wins this fight by another knockout, and I'm going to say round four knockout. I, I think that Leon has the skills, but mentally missed some components in that first fight, and this is always a, a thing I say here and to you and every time I see a rematch. Rematches rarely play out the same. If you, you remember just tomorrow, that fight was pretty boring up until the knockout, just, just kind of him holding Leon against the fence. But these fights rarely come out, don't come out the same way, and I think that Leon makes the adjustments and comes out better and finds another knockout. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, Usman at 35, almost 36, is uh, at the tail end of his career, um, trying to make uh, one last run at the title shot. But I think uh, Leon, 31, in his prime now, home crowd with him. Um, I think he's going to put on a big performance and still um, I think he's going to find a knockout. Um, um, maybe, maybe another head kick. I don't know. But Kamara, um, he has another hand injury, which has been a problem for him. Um, even in, in that uh, Covington, second Covington fight, Covington stunned him, rocked him a little bit in the end of the fourth round. Who knows um, if there was 10 more seconds, if Colby could have could have finished him there but right like like you said i think uh leon edwards is super dangerous and i think he finds another knockout i i think this is a really hard fight to break down for a rematch because you know that first fight leon edwards fought at elevation and clearly his body wasn't responding as well to it um his legs kind of were buckling at moments in like the second round after some brief grappling and uh Kamaru, you know, he trains only at elevation. This fight's at sea level now. Should be a little bit even for both guys to be able to um, have a good gas tank for this. And if you want, you know, that card that they were on, um, I, I don't remember the exact number, but all the other fights had people gassing. Luke Rockhold, Paulo Costa, Jose Aldo got tired. Um, Romanov. Uh, yeah, Alexander, Alexander Romanov. Um, there was... Angelosa and AJ Fletcher, they all got tired. I mean, it was just happening consistently. And, uh, you know, I'll give props to Kamaru for his talents. You know, this dude, how he wins fights, he just dictates how they play out. Like, with his wrestling threat or just control time threat, 
he can dictate where it plays out. He'll hold you on the fence. He doesn't care if it's going to be boring. He'll do it, and he'll take you down, never really fight for submissions or ground and pound, but he'll take you down and just hold you there. Um, obviously, he'll try to pressure the whole fight, and, uh, you know, he, he gets... Uh, he gets takedowns on the fence. And for Leon, the way he's got to win this fight is he's got to stay off the fence. And if he is on the fence, he's got to counter Kamaru Usman. I mean, I don't know if you remember all the exchanges in their last fight, but there's times where Leon just threw his uh, guard up against the fate, uh, the cage and Kamaru just landed body shots, uh, shots through his guard. And I think that, you know, Leon can sneak in punches there and c- counter Kamaru. And, uh, Knees and elbows, too, in those clinches. I think Leon's got to land some elbows and work um, off the cage. Yeah, and, and we've seen uh, with those knees, you know, the body shots. Kamaru Usman does not like body shots. That's where he fakes the nut shots, you know. Um, oh, he did it in the Edwards fight, too. Yeah, that was in the fifth round, like a minute before the knockout. Yeah. But, um, you know, he doesn't like those body shots. And, you know, he might grab his nuts and do it, but maybe the ref one of these times will let it just go on. We'll see what happens. But there's so many questions. Like, how good is tomorrow's chin? I would I would assume it's still going to be okay. But um, that was a pretty brutal knockout. And, you know, the pace and pressure. I think Leon, what people are making a mistake for with Kamaru, like I said, don't let him dictate the fight. Leon needs to go out there and put a little pressure on Kamaru. Gilbert Burns did it right away to Kamaru, and he had a really hard time with it. And then, uh, you know, Kamaru got way too technical for for Gilbert. But Leon's a really technical striker. I think in that in that first fight with them, or sorry, second fight it would be, but Leon, that head kick that he threw was the first head kick of the entire fight that he threw, and that's one of his best techniques, you know? Um, and, and if he wants to use it, he should, he should be using it earlier and making Kamaru think about it. Maybe go up to the, go to the body when he's, uh, faking upstairs, shit like that. But, uh, his boxing, I think he's just got to put the pressure and volume on Kamaru and, uh, touch that shin boy. If, If Colby rocked him, uh, I think Leon can put him out. So anything else for you? Yeah. I mean, especially coming off that brutal KO one shot KO. I mean, what is this? Seven months later, um, Usman's. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that chin is uh, not as good as it once was. Right. And I'm hoping for this to be a better title fight. I mean, the first fight. Don't we get? Don't get me wrong. The knockout's incredible. The first four rounds of the fight fucking sucked though. So we'll see. We'll see if this one's going to be a little cooler. Um, kind of depends if Leon really wants to to give up a really good fight so we'll see all right edwards ko round four i know i know it doesn't matter from the trenches i'm built like this don't doubt to me i couldn't do it 